All right, here. Uh, now we've uh, got an example for a band break. Well, I can't continue that. Uh, we've got a Seaworthy Systems bucket hat on. And there's uh, another Van Halen shirt. I'm going to have to wear my uh, Van Halen hoodie here because um, I've turned off the uh, air uh, conditioner heat pump thing yesterday and I forgot to turn it back on, but it's like really loud. So um, here's a typical band break um, problem 1613 out of Shigley. And one of the first things we want to try to get out of any of these is the geometry, the angle of the wrap. That's the um, one of the main things that we take uh, take, a, take a look at. So here, uh, with the provided information, we notice that the radius is 100 millimeters. And then this distance from the center to this pin is 160. So uh, we're able to get uh, that angle. I'm calling it, they're calling it alpha right here, is uh, 51.32 degrees. I've assigned on accident um, uh, problems before where that geometry was a lot harder to get. And um, I think in uh, the problem that's uh, going to be assigned for homework, um, I think I give you the angle because, uh, and originally I think when I, uh, 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 that same problem, when I originally came up with it, I was going to make it uh, so that it was just the, geom the geometry you had to figure out. And then I started to do it by hand and it was a real pain. And so a lot of times I, I would actually uh, probably do a, a import it into SolidWorks. And, uh, and sketch over it and then uh, get, get from that, get what the uh, actual angle is going to be because geometry gets annoying sometimes. Um, so anyway, uh, here is like the free body diagram, or I guess it's not quite a free body diagram, but you can see uh, the, the, the numbering of the, um, of the forces, the, the tensions in the bands. P1 is usually what we use for the larger of the two, and that's going to be determined by the rotation of this drum. Uh, it's going uh, counter, excuse me, clockwise, so that means it's going to be pulling on this uh, left side um, uh, band more than it is on this other side. There's still going to be tension in both of them, and you'll notice that by pushing down here, we increase the tension of this band, um, and so th that's going to be, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, partly uh, responsible because of this force right here. But it's also going to, uh, this band's going to be more just because the the friction that's being ta taken place inside there. I've often looked at this, and, and just um, some of my gut feeling is that, well, shouldn't this thing tilt down? Well, it, it would um, in the sense that this band is going to deflect, um, but just like with most um, metal materials, that deflection is going to be pretty small. So it depends on the length here. If you'd ever actually even be able to, to feel that uh, uh, or be able to, to measure the amount of distance that would be because that would require the band to deflect. But it does have to have some uh, insulating material in between the, the steel band and the drum. Um, and that might be, have some flexibility to it. So then you could probably do feel some, some amount of motion. Uh, well, that will change the geometry of that if that goes down. But we're going to go ahead and assume that everything is stiff right here and that this geometry remains to place. I'm just mentioning it to you because what, when I look at the thing, I, I start to like overcomplicate it by, by thinking about like what would actually happen. But just keep that in mind. Now, with many problems uh, in solid mechanics, one of the very first things we do is the free body diagram. And this was one that was already made out in the, um, in the textbook solution manual, I believe. And if we take the sum of the moments, and that's not the solution manual, that's me making a, like a word equation editor. We take the um, sum of the moments about uh, pin uh, O right here, and we're able to figure out what, um, and, and okay, there you go. Um, so I did it in pieces for some reason. So um, that's counterclockwise. It's going to be positive. So it's P2 times that uh, 100 millimeters or 0.1 meters. 
and then F is going to be clockwise, and that's going to be, um, once again, about the pin. So it's going to be whatever that is, 325 uh, uh, millimeters or 0.325 meters. And from that, we can find that P2 is going to be 1,300 newtons uh, compared to this uh, 400 newtons uh, uh, that was applied right there. Um, I think that's true. Um, is a maximum force. Why isn't that 400? I think that's a typo. I'm not sure. Um, so a lot of times nobody sees these notes when I write them out. And I think this is the case there. But that should be 400, right? I mean, it just looks like it should be 400.325 times and divided by 0.1. Yeah, that's the right answer. So, uh, duh, that should be 400 right there. And um, that angle uh, that we found right here, the actual wrap angle is going to be uh, from here to there, right? So it's going to be this angle right there of phi or whatever the hell Greek letter that is. Um, so that comes out. And we got in, we're going to need that in radians. So we get 218.7 degrees, but we didn't pi, multiply by pi, divide by 180, and we get 3.817 radians. And remember that the uh, equation that we had for, let's go back. Nope. There you go. We use this equation right here uh, for that. Um, and... So we end up with, um, we're able to find what the P1 is going to be equal to. That's 4,085 newtons. And therefore, we're going to end up getting um, uh, uh, the torque from the difference between the two tensions and multiplied by the radius. 278.5 newton meters. And that's a pretty easy example. But we could do we could mess around with this a lot. But by the way, notice that we didn't need the bandwidth right here. So one thing that we could do to modify this problem is to tell you that it's a particular material, right? And then therefore we would have to go back and look up in Shigley the um, uh, pre maximum pressure. We could ask, what's the maximum braking capacity for this uh, configuration, right? So that could be, mm, let me think about that. I think we could do that. Let's, no, I didn't mean to discard, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. Um, if we go to back to Shigley, so I'm inventing a problem here on the fly, but it's a, it's a good problem to have because we, we want to be able to design something. So we want to be able to do it from any direction. So do we have the materials up front or I think it's later on? Uh, yeah, sure enough, I, I looked to the wrong spot. If we go to the material section of this um, chapter, boom, right there, we can ha find out what the maximum pressure is going to be, right? So um, I don't think I have a pen working onto this thing. I could uh, right here. Oh, that won't let me be a pen. That'll be a, uh, I'll go. I'll go in ink right there. No, that's a signature. Okay. This, uh, I really miss my version of um, redact. No, right? Can you just draw? Can you just sketch on the thing? No, you can't sketch on it. That's stupid. Because I could be, I can sketch on the damn thing um, with my, uh, no, that's the wrong thing, on my Microsoft pen. I don't know what's to snip. So screw you. Okay. Um, so we get the max, we can get the maximum. Uh, uh, Let's see. Let's say we, we, we said some, something like this. Uh, uh, here you go. We'll say that <laughs> we'll, we'll pick a woven cotton as the, uh, the brake lining uh, material in there. Then what we would do is we would come into here and we would, we would find this, mat, this pressure right here. Let's see if we could do that. We'd find, we'd use this pressure. And then we could find out what P1 was going to be, right? Uh, then we would need P2 from that, right? But, um, and, and so we could get P2 uh, from here, right? Because we knew this angle of this wrap. And then we could find out what the braking torque was going to be. And then from that, 
and then a free body diagram, we could figure out what the uh, force is going to be. I'm just pointing out that this problem, as straightforward and uh, as short as it is, could be um, a lot more complicated. And I don't know if I asked a, uh, a homework problem that was that complicated, but I think one of the homework problems is going to be to design the handbrake that you would use on your um, uh, uh, for your project. And that's going to be something kind of similar in terms of um, design decisions that you would have to make. You have to pick out what this d uh, drum diameter is. Now you already know what the diameter of the um, of the drum that holds the uh, the cable, but that's not going to necessarily be the same uh, uh, drum diameter. In fact, it probably shouldn't. But you're going to have to pick out like an arrangement. Um, I, I gave you a couple choices that's besides this one. And then you want to uh, uh, pick... Um, you're going, to, you're going to try to go backwards and figure out what the torque is going to be and then uh, pick some other things. Pick the bandwidth. You might pick the material. So the combination of things that you're going to need to do is going to be this problem in reverse. Um, but that will feed into your project. That's my idea for trying to incorporate uh, um, the latter part for project uh, part three, part three. Uh, 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 two of the project will be the, like some of the work that you do here um, for the whole thing um, and uh, so that's the example and okay so uh, for our guitar um, of the day here and by the way this thing is all covered in the, the, I think there's like stains and stuff on this hat so that's kind of gross um, the guitar du jour is probably out of tune is began its life as actually owned by my uh, guitar teacher and he made a guitar out of parts uh, or he had somebody make it out of parts it was out of this really interesting bridge called a two tech that's the number two and then t-e-k if you're interested in looking that up it's this big hunk of steel that bolts to the back of the body and then the the this there's this um kind of like uh, um, cantilevered arms that are poking up and this I mean it, this thing is massively heavy and then um, I've changed the uh, uh, pick guard and pickups on this like a ton of times um, I also put a fake logo on there that looks like it says Fender but it says Tedster right in there so I made that uh, it's just as a joke it's just a logo I put on there but this right here you can just can't see really with the reflection is these are EMG um, active pickups by uh, come from a David Gilmore uh, EMG pickup set um, it usually comes with I just changed this the other day it usually comes with this pick guard right here and I don't know see if you could see that they call this the joking color co when when they make a lot of different guitar stuff out of this they call this mother of toilet seat because everybody's grandmother's toilet seat was like made out of this and at one time and another although your grandmothers are almost my age at this point um and no, that's not true I'd have to be like 60 wouldn't I I'm only 50 anyway um <laughs> That's not a great sound right there. I think everything is turned down. That's why. Let's see. Why is that such a dark sound? Um, I have too much drive on there. Oh, I got this. So turn this down. Turn the drive on. Mm. Stratty sounding. There's the neck. My favorite pick. I like I like neck pickups a lot more than part about the strats I think are this in-between sounds like it and um, one of the nice f features of the David Gilmore is he got these active knobs on here so that these are like uh, uh, like expanders I had them up actually so it's not gonna sound like better 
favorite solos of all time is comfortably known man <laughs> You can get all funky too. Just a very versatile guitar. Quite often, though, when I'm playing in a band, it just doesn't sound like fat enough. So I, I go back. To, I go back to Les Pauls all the time. That's, that's my preferred guitar. But and, and and Eddie Van Halen heavy metal guitars, but do love strats so that was today's um guitar the david gilmore um, pickup set with the ted stir formerly owned by matt mccloskey um it's a nice black guitar and i i do and, and now that it doesn't have the mother of toilet seat i'm not embarrassed by it as much ta-da the end mm, 16 minutes but there was a lot of more guitar content this time